And all of God's people said amen again. Amen. Are you excited to be in the house of the Lord today? Amen. Has God done anything special for you this past week? It is an honor to be here with you, as has been stated. My name is Pastor Helvis Clay Moody. In the event that we haven't met, I do bring you greetings from the Southwestern Union office, where Carlos Craig is our president, Stephen Brooks serves as our executive secretary, and John Page serves as our treasurer. I serve the departments that has been stated, youth ministries, young adult ministries, and prayer ministries. How many of you know we can't do anything without prayer? That's about four or five hands. We can't do anything without prayer. What do you say? So we are honored to be here with you, and we solicit your prayers as we work while it is day, for night cometh when no man can work. It is an honor, as Pastor Harris has stated, to be in the presence of Dr. Hunt and his wife, have worked with him in so many different occasions, and we pray that God will continue to bless you and your ministry in a mighty marvelous way. Uh, my cousin is with us as well, sitting by my wife, and we're grateful for her to be here. And we pray that you were blessed by the ministry of our dear brother Henry Jones, and uh, he is here. We have to lay to rest one of the songbirds by the name of Oliver Moore. Many of you may know him. Uh, his service is today. He has led out in music ministry throughout America. But nonetheless, we have this hope in the word of God that one day soon and very soon, he that will come shall come and will not tarry, bursting through the clouds of glory and every eye shall see him and every tongue shall confess that he is Lord. Are you excited today? I'm excited today. My heart is full with joy and everybody express themselves differently. But there is no greater joy than to see precious lives go down in the watery grave of baptism and come up a brand new creature in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Pray with me. We'll jump into the word of God. Uh, put on your Holy Ghost seatbelt. I'll go fast, but I don't want you to miss it. All right. All day is the Sabbath, but I won't keep you all day. And the church said... Our Father, which is in heaven, speak through this feeble body made of clay. Men, women, boys, and girls will hear a word that will equip, empower, encourage, and motivate them to continue to press towards the mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus. Thank you for what we have witnessed today and continue to do exceedingly abundantly more than we can think or imagine based upon the word of God in Ephesians 3 and 20. And God, I pray for those who are watching online that you would move in a mighty way. Bless us and keep us now. Do what we cannot do for ourselves. Save us and set us free from the enemy. And all of God's people said, Amen. Well, friends, if you like sermon titles, I'll give you a very simple one. It is not complex. It is only four letters, and it is entitled Grow. Can you say that with me, everybody? That's not quite everybody. Uh, grow, G-R-O-W. It is corporate worship. You may not be accustomed to talking in church, but just do it for me just this one time. Grow. All right, all right. Now, we had a beautiful uh, leader here, and right before we let her go, it's a song that I grew up singing, and some of you grew up singing it too, and let's see if you know this song. Read your Bible. Now, I don't sing. I I'll say it like a broken record, but check this out. Let's see if we can get you all involved, and some of you are like, what song is that? But the words go something like this. Read your. Hey, come on now, come on. Hey. 
Amen? We'll leave it right there, but it's another verse. Uh, we won't sing that verse, but it says, if you neglect to read your Bible and you neglect to pray, you're going to shrink, <laughs> shrink, shrink. You can find yourself shrinking so much that you find yourself on your knees uh, still praying, and then you will grow, grow, grow. Amen? Amen? Well, friends, uh, we had an opportunity. We had an opportunity, and we had an opportunity to do a mission trip in Louisiana, and our theme, and our, our theme for that was uh, let's grow something. And I'm going to work that concept. I'm going to work that concept. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Eternal God, continue to do great things. Amen. Now, check this out, friends. Uh, many of you notice that uh, the state of Louisiana is hit with hurricanes almost every year. In 2021, there was a hurricane by the name of Hurricane Ida. And Hurricane Ida did a large amount of devastation. Some individuals stated that it did so much devastation that it was compared to the famous Hurricane Katrina. However, it did not hit the direct city of New Orleans, but it hit the surrounding cities of New Orleans, Louisiana. And our office and the office staff went to Louisiana and we discovered that there was a great need. Our community service department from the Union and the Texas Conference and the Southwest Region Conference and Arkansas Louisiana Conference were all hands on deck in Louisiana trying to make a difference in Hurricane Ida. Now we have in my department with youth and young adults some young people that are saying what can we do and many of our seven day Adventist schools including North Dallas Adventist Academy they chose to go with us uh, to Louisiana uh, to New Orleans specifically with a project in mind that was named Let's Grow Something. How did we come up with this? We came up with this because uh, as we sat around the table discussing what the needs were, we discovered that in Louisiana there was a food shortage. So we discovered that if we would grow something, then we could provide food for the people in the community who says amen to that. But if you don't grow anything, you can't reap anything. Yeah, can y'all talk to me just a little bit? Just say that with me. Say, if you don't grow anything, then you can't reap anything. Does that not make sense to you? All right, now check this out. It is here that we uh, have a picture of a garden that the North Dallas Adventist, uh, Adventist Academy chose to plant. Uh, we planted five community gardens in Louisiana. This is just one picture of what you're seeing that just came to me uh, and Stephen Gray and Maurice Terrio, who worked hard with the entire team. This is the church in Slidell who partnered with the community where we had four boxes placed there. And they sent this picture last month, if I'm correct, uh, sharing with us uh, that they are getting ready to reap uh, what they have planted. Amen. I, I'm going somewhere, but I want you to stay with me. Just say grow. Now, now, I want you to know that we also planted one in Baton Rouge. We also planted one at Caffin Avenue. We also planted one, and it was at the Adventist Academy uh, in New Orleans for two of the Adventist schools. One for the Southwest Region Conference School, and one uh, was for the Arkansas Louisiana School. So we have pushed the initiative of growing something, a food shortage. 
and for people to share with us pictures of the gardens and people in the community also benefiting from them. We even received pictures from the school of the Southwest Region Conference that the people had the greens and they were cooking the greens. It is something to be said about growing something. Now, I know some of you are looking at me like we're from the city and you're from the country and we don't grow greens, but some of you are country folk and you know about growing something. Can I get some witnesses in here? Now, I am from the country, all right? I'm from the deep south in South Carolina where they worked us so hard until we didn't want to grow anything. <laughs> now, now, it is a blessing. It is a blessing uh, to be able to grow up in an environment uh, where you learn how to grow. Sermon title, Grow. I'm going somewhere. Just stay with me. Uh, uh, because uh, I learned when somebody would call me and say, hey, Pastor Moody, how to plant watermelons? Uh, I would say take five seeds, uh, put them in a hole. Uh, don't dig it too deep. Uh, take a cup of water so that you can water it, uh, especially when it does not rain. Uh, then take a garden hoe uh, and then measure the garden hoe, uh, a garden hoe and a length and and a half so that when the vines come up they are not so close together that they will choke one another out and will not grow it is a science to growing watermelons take a look take a look at this my father taught us how to plant watermelons this is my father his birthday was yesterday he turned 78 years of age on yesterday. He planted a acre of watermelons. This was the first picking of his garden this year. There is something to be said about growing, but if you don't grow, you can't reap. Take a look at the next slide, or even if it's before, uh, you will see uh, Kushaw. Y'all don't know what that is. Some of you know, okra is on the truck, tomatoes on the truck, and I have other pictures uh, that I did not bring up uh, to post up, but uh, beans and peas and squash, but you have to grow. Some people are like, you getting hungry, I'm getting hungry. This man preaching all this southern food, uh, but it is something to be said about growing something. Dr. Hun, I've discovered that as we grow things, our spiritual lives must grow as well. So let me just take you quickly here. I, I want to share with you that there are three things that I want to bring to your attention, uh, and they're simple. Number one, you have to cultivate what you plant. The second thing is uh, you have to develop it uh, by taking care of it as it grows all by itself. Uh, but if you're not uh, helping it develop, uh, then the wheat and the tare shall grow together. Okay? And then... Uh, you will watch it flourish. But let me back you up so that you can follow that the thesis statement for this message is, if we as individuals stop growing, then we begin to die. So why did Pastor Moody sing uh, that old song, uh, read your Bibles and pray every day? Uh, because I have discovered uh, that in these last days, uh, we must pray without ceasing. I've discovered uh, in these last days uh, that we must study the word of God, line upon line and precept upon precept. Uh, for if we are not careful, the very elect can be deceived. It's Matthew chapter 24, and you can read the entire chapter. But we are living in perilous times, the Bible says. Men are lovers of themselves, lovers of pleasure, more than lovers of God. And if we're not careful, saints of the living God, we can shrink. About four people said amen. 
check this out. I'll go quick, but here is the word of God. Read it in your spare time. They'll put it on the screen for us. Matthew chapter 13 and verse 15 says, and I paraphrase it, the heart of some will grow, that's the word, dull. What does the Bible say? The heart of some will grow dull. We put it on the screen. It's in English and Spanish. Uh, thank you for the hearts of his people have grown dull. Their ears are hard of hearing. Uh, their eyes, they have closed. Uh, lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears. Uh, lest they should understand with their hearts and turn. Uh, so that I should heal them. Uh, Jesus Christ uh, is coming uh, soon. Uh, and he knows uh, that the devil is out to steal, kill, and destroy. But he has come that we may have life uh, and have it more abundantly. Do not allow your heart to, to grow dull. Study to show thyself approval. Push your way through. Pray your way through. Fast your way through. Jesus is on the way. I got about five, six amens now. The, the harder you say amen, the harder I preach. Here is the word of God, uh, uh, Matthew chapter 24 and verse 12. Are you there? Turn quickly. You said, preacher, uh, how fast are you going? Uh, let me slow down. Matthew chapter 24 and verse 12, uh, paraphrase, uh, the love of many will grow cold. And because lawlessness will abound, uh, the love of many will grow cold. Can I preach that thing? Uh, uh, look at the world in which we live. Uh, lawlessness uh, appears to be everywhere. Do what you want to do. Young people, you say it like this. I'll do me and you do you and everything is going to be all right. I can choose who I want to be. I can think how I want to think. But, but the last I check... Uh, God has given us his holy commandments, and he says, if you love me, keep my... Oh, I feel like I have a church right now. Uh, I, this is a topical sermon, so in a topical sermon, uh, we're going to weave in and out of the word of God, uh, but the foundation is uh, don't grow cold, uh, don't grow dull, but grow in God. Oh, am I too excited for you? Uh, there is a danger. Uh, Galatians 6 and 9, go there. There is a danger uh, because I don't want you to shrink. I don't want you to shrink. Uh, here it is. Uh, and uh, I'm in Galatians 6 and 9. Galatians 6 and 9. Uh, check it out. Uh, the media team, they're on it. Uh, there is a danger. And I paraphrase. Uh, there is a danger of growing weary in doing good. And let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season uh, we shall reap uh, if we do not lose uh, heart. You can't just plant the watermelons. Uh, you can't just plant the okra. You have to tend to it. You have to tend to your spiritual lives. Even for those precious lives that just got baptized, they have to continue to study. And it is our responsibility to help them along the way. Help, not hurt. Ooh. Oh, it didn't get quiet now, Pastor Sean. There is a danger, my friends, in growing weary while doing good. Has the devil ever spoke to you? Uh, why are you going to church on the Sabbath? All your friends are doing everything. Uh huh. Then, as soon as the devil speaks to you, the Holy Spirit says, remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. I've given you six days, but the seventh day I want you to date me. Hang out with me. Holler with Jesus Christ. Oh, I'm sorry. I, uh, hang out with the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. There is no greater joy in spending quality time with Jesus Christ. But the devil will simply say to you, uh, is Jesus Christ really coming? Uh, doing all that service in the church and no one says thank you. Using your gas money. You've already given a tithe and offering. Does it take all of that? That's how the devil works. Don't get weary in well-doings. 
because a reward is coming one day, my brothers and sisters, uh, that eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, uh, nor has it entered into the hearts of man uh, what it will be like when he bursts through the clouds of glory uh, and every eye shall see him. Oh, what a day that will be when the trumpet shall sound uh, and the dead in Christ rise first. Uh, do not get weary in well doings. For so many of our loved ones have already fallen asleep in Jesus. And we're waiting and longing for that day. And if we don't hold on to the hope of glory, what then do we have? Here it is. Uh, don't read your Bible. Don't pray every day. And you're going to shrink, shrink, shrink. Read in your spare time. I won't go there now. But 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 and 13, uh, it matches Galatians 6 and 9. Uh, but look at Ephesians 4 and 22. Uh, and I paraphrase, uh, uh, there is a possibility of growing corrupt according to deceitful lusts. Are you there? It's the word of God. That you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man, which grows corrupt according to deceitful lusts. In other words, uh, when I grow spiritually, uh, I am growing in Jesus Christ, uh, and there is a separation uh, from good and evil. And one of my favorite texts is the good that I said I would do, I find myself not doing. And the evil that I said I wouldn't do, this is what I find myself doing. Oh, wretched man that I am. But don't you know that when we say we are children of the King of kings and the Lord of lords, we are heirs of the promise, we are Abraham's seed, we are children of Christ. So when we put on Jesus Christ, we need to act like him. Oh, about four amens. We need to talk like him. We need to preach like him. We need to live like him. We need to walk like him. So that the world can see Christ in us. The hope of glory. And yes, the truth is sometimes we as Christians collectively have not done a great job in sharing with the world the love of Jesus Christ. But this is the beauty. There is grace in knowing Jesus. Amen. That although the devil is saying shrink, although the devil is saying give up, although the devil is saying throw in the towel, although the devil is saying you can't do good enough. That's what the devil is saying. God is saying, my grace is sufficient. I've already paid it in full. Who says amen to that? Now check this out. I'm going to go now to 2 Timothy. No, excuse me. I'm going to go to 2 Peter. 2 Peter. I'm going to go to 2 Peter. And I want to work through 2 Peter here for a few minutes. Just for a few minutes as I work these words one more time. 2 Peter. All right? Remember now, we're getting ready to focus on you have to cultivate. Uh-huh. Then you have to develop. And then you have to flourish. Can you say that with me, everybody? Say cultivate. Then say develop, and then say flourish. These are known to be synonyms for the word grow. So when you look at this thing now, I want you to know that as I look back at our thesis statement that simply suggests to us in our thesis statement that we must continue, and I'm paraphrasing, to read our Bibles. We must continue to study the Word of God because if we are not growing, then we are dying. You with me, everybody? All right, you can even go back and look in your spare time that Jesus came and he looked at the tree and he says, if this tree does not grow, then what? Cut it out. All right. And he gives it a period of time. I want you to know as brothers and sisters in Christ, it is high time for us to continue to grow individually and collectively. Who says amen to that? individually and collectively it is what God is calling us to do because there are people who don't know Jesus as their personal savior and they're looking for someone to lead them to guide them to direct them to salvation 
So, so check this out. This is the process. This is the process. We don't want to shrink. So then as I look at transitioning it uh, for us to look, uh, I begin to process this thought, Dr. Hunt, and this is another sermon for a different time, Pastor Harris, uh, but the thought process uh, as I was developing this sermon came this way. Uh, is there a difference uh, in being religious and being spiritual? Food for thought. Now process that because the Pharisees were religious, but were they spiritual? So we cannot be so heavenly minded that we're no earthly good. So how do we grow? How do we cultivate? How do we develop and flourish even the new believers in Jesus Christ? Even when you grow watermelons, uh, even when I plant the seeds, uh, the watermelon does not show up uh, until about 90 days after the fact. But yet sometimes uh, we expect uh, new believers to be on our level. It's just food for thought. There is a process in growth that God allows all of us because all of us have different journeys. But never miss the mark. For the mark is that his grace is sufficient. And if his grace is sufficient, uh, uh, while you're cultivating, uh, somebody else may be developing. Uh, while you're developing, somebody else already may be flourishing. Uh, but it's their journey, and just keep praying them through. Hey, let me take you to 2 Peter. Let me take you to 2 Peter, uh, 2 Peter chapter 3. Check this out. And you heard me say it, and I just want you to have this for a reference point in your spare time. Please read in your spare time. Take notes now. Take notes if you're watching. 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy, read this in your spare time. Chapter 2 and verse 15. It paraphrases this way, that you will study to show thyself approved, rightly dividing the word of truth. But then there are other texts that goes with that, that still helps you cultivate. Because if you stop reading the word of God, the devil will do his best to deceive you. So, so check this out. Second Peter, Second Peter, and I'm going to look at specifically chapter 3 and verses 3 and 4. But when you begin at verse 1, I want you to catch this now. Second Peter chapter 3, we're reading today from the New King James Version if you had any questions. Beloved, this is verse 1. I now write to you this second epistle of which I want you to stir up a pure mind. Can everybody say pure mind? Okay. If I am going to develop spiritually in my growth, uh, I need to have a pure mind. Okay. All right. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let's see if I have everybody. A what kind of mind? Pure. That's almost everybody. Let's see if we can try one more time. What kind of mind? Now, now, let me see if I can ask a question. Pastor Moody, how is it possible for me to have a pure mind when social media has so much negativity? Oh, it got real quiet that time. Oh, you on Instagram, you on TikTok. What's holy and what's sanctified on these sites? There are things, do not be deceived. There are things that are holy and pure and encouraging on these sites. But, the majority, all right, you got the picture. Look at, look at what the author says here. I want you to stir up a pure mind. How can I have a pure mind if I'm not in the word of God, if I'm not praying, if I'm not filling myself with spiritual things, then how can I have a pure mind? Okay. How can I grow? If I don't have a pure mind, because I must grow spiritually. How am I growing? Two people say it spiritually. Well, I hope the whole church is growing. <laughs> that you may be mindful of the words uh, which were spoken before by the holy prophets uh, and the commandments of us. Uh, now watch this. Look at verse 3. Look at verse 3. Make sure you read it loud and clear. You know, let me let you read. 
Knowing this first. That's about four people reading. Come on now. Come on. We're a church. Knowing this first that will come in the walking according to their own and saying what? Let's go to the next one and saying what? Where is the promise? Here it is. Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. How can I grow when the devil is attacking me? You've been preaching your whole life. Jesus coming. He hadn't showed up yet. Scoffers. Noah preached 120 years. They laughed at him, but it rained. As soon as the devil tries his best to deceive you, you go back to the word of God. Develop a prayer journal to write down the things that you ask God for. And then you go back and say, checklist, God did exceedingly abundantly. Then you tell others uh, and you continue to grow because your faith uh, will be tried uh, and tested. But we must continue to grow spiritually. Can the church say amen? Amen. So you cultivate, you cultivate it uh, through the study of uh, the word of God. You stir up your pure mind. You cultivate it by praying without ceasing. So when I look at that point, uh, I want you just to jot this down. Uh, How can we grow spiritually? The first way we grow spiritually is we grow mentally and we grow mentally by studying the word of God. For if anybody like wisdom, the Bible says, ask of God and he will give it to you freely he will give it to you so god uh give me a pure mind remove any evil any doubt away that i hold on to the hope of glory that one day soon and very soon he that will come shall come and will not tarry you have to stay in second peter because second peter gives us hope but the second point is uh, we must grow physically so when we're growing physically we need to develop uh, i don't know how many of you work out uh, and lift weights but you have to develop your muscles so I just want to share something with you that you may know and you may not know but check this out if I'm growing physically I need to make sure that I am taking care of my body which is the temple of God so I need to take care of my mind to grow then I need to take care of my body to grow so can we just review what we believe is new start When I point to you, say new. When I point to you, say start. Some of you said that silently. I like to hear you out loud. Thank you for corporate worship. When you process growing uh, physically now, it's not just about uh, let me uh, get uh, sexy so everybody can lust after me. He said, this man crazy. New start. Watch this. Watch this. Nutrition. Exercise. Water. Eight out eight glasses a day. I struggle with that one. Pray for me. Sunshine. Vitamin D. The health message, go out and walk. Physically, take care of your body. Temperance, rest. What? Temperance. Be careful of what you put in. Then air, then rest, then trust in God. Grow physically. If you would like a book to read in your spare time, it's called Counsel on Diets by Ellen White. And nobody said amen. (laughs) It will bless you real good. 
I'm getting ready to go. I'm getting ready to go. I guarantee you. But check this out. You have to go to 2 Peter uh, chapter 3. I'm still there in verse 8, 9, and 10. I'm not reading all of the verses for the sake of time, uh, but check it out. It says, but beloved, do not forget this one thing, uh, that with the Lord one day is a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. Watch this now. This is where you shout. The Lord is not slack concerning his promises, as some count slackness, but it's long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. He hasn't come yet because he knows we still need to grow. I got to go. See, the word of God is good. While we should have died in our sins, his grace is sufficient. So while we are saying, Lord, I've been preaching my whole life, he's like, one day is a thousand years with me. <laughs> Grow, number one, mentally. Cultivate your mind in the word of God and not all this other foolishness. Grow physically by developing, taking care of your body, exercising, nutrition, air, rest, get some sleep. We in America, get it while you can get it while they're getting this good. Work three, four, five jobs. Okay. Final, grow spiritually. When you grow spiritually, you flourish. Watch this. You expand. Uh, you flourish. You expand because now you are in a position that you can bless others. But if you have not grown, how can we bless others? 2 Peter 3, 12 and 13, and then I'll end at verse 18. 12 and 13 says, you have it? You have it? Looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God because of which the heavens will be dissolved. Mm -hmm. Being with what fire and with the elements will melt with fervent heat. Let's read the next verse. Nevertheless, we according to his promise uh, look for what? A new and a new in which righteousness. Uh, can I read verse 18? Can you read it with me, everybody? Read verse 18. What does it say? But grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. And the word of God says, grow. Did, did I make it up? It says, one more time, grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory. To him be glory. Both now and forever. Amen. It is my desire that we grow mentally. We grow physically. We grow spiritually. And we watch God do exceedingly abundantly things in our lives for his glory. The mission field is large, it's vast. And we must ask God to give us wisdom to help meet the needs of the people. So we went to New Orleans and we left them with what they needed, a community garden that's blessing others. Let's continue to ask God to give us wisdom so that we can grow and be a blessing to the people of God all through this land and country. Amen. Amen. We have witnessed today precious lives get baptized. And I encourage you, don't get weary in well-doings. Because one day, your reward is on the way. He will say two things. He will say, depart from me, work of iniquity. I know you not. I don't want that reward. I want the reward that says, well done, thy good and faithful. You've been faithful for a few things. Enter now into the joy of the Lord. How many of you want that reward? 
Oh, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When he bursts through the clouds of glory, the dead in Christ rise. What a day of rejoicing that will be. When mortals shall take on immortality, what a day of rejoicing that shall be. When hospitals and nursing homes are put out of business, what a day of rejoicing that shall be. In the event that you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Once again, like Pastor Sean did earlier, he extended you an opportunity to accept the Savior today. If there is one today, just take that card, fill it out, turn it in before you leave. And if you want to be bold enough to say, hey, preacher, I'm standing today with holy boldness to say, I want to go all the way with Jesus. Just stand wherever you are. Let us recognize you as you prepare for the next baptism that takes place December the 31st. Man, woman, boy, or girl, I'm walking to my seat now. Jesus is on the way. Will you be ready? Will you be ready? He's on the way. He's on the way. Our Father and our God, save us. In Jesus' name we pray.